Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. <laughs> Miss Connolly, mm -hmm. sorry I'm late. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I just hope that I can be of some help. Uh, how's Mr. Matthews? We had him over for dinner this evening, of course, and he's just beside himself. He just can't understand that he's disappearing like this. You think something terrible has happened to us? We never know. Oh, dear. Oh, you think the salesman might have had something to do with it? Mm, there's always the possibility. Everybody we've talked to seems to be clear. Cleaning lady, Miss Murray, said she took Mrs. Matthews downtown at 9.30... You saw them leave. I waved to Betty as they backed out of the driveway. Maybe Betty had amnesia or something. Why, she wouldn't leave like this without a note. Well, the hospitals are being checked. The only thing we can do is follow every possible lead. And uh, let's get a seat while there's some left. Over there, okay? Yeah, sure. Here, here, Mr. Kelly. Yeah. You know the game, Sunday? Yeah. yeah, I suppose. Well, those Rams are really improved, I'll say. You policemen football fans? We'll share what we go whenever we can. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, Where was Pete please last remember one? the number uh, and went fishing. I I wish I'd have done. <laughs> if you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him help. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get an actual tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving over here to the end of the stage, boy. Number two, come on, pick it up. My feet hurt. Never mind. Turn face front. Hands at your sides and look straight ahead, straight out through the screen. You, number two, stand up straight. What you picking on me for? I'm not picking on you. Do what you're told to do. Yes, now, when I call out your number, step out. Keep facing the screen and talk up so everybody can hear you. I want all the people out there to get a good look at you and be able to hear what you say. So stand up and talk up. All right, number one, Clyde McDonald, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, Clyde? Lieutenant, Morning, that's the third one. Where? He looks like the man. The only thing is his hair wasn't that short if it's the same man. Well, you'll get a better look at him in a minute. Oh, Salt Lake City. You working here in town? Oh, I can't seem to find anything I like. Where'd you get the car you were picked up in? Oh, a friend of mine let me use it. Oh, you know it was a stolen car? No, of course I didn't know it was stolen. You think I'd go for a ride in a hot car? <laughs> you did. Where's your friend that lent you the car? Well, I told you, I guess. You've been out there, haven't you? We were out there. No one's living there or has lived there by the name you gave us. That's funny. Oh, I know it's what I told you. That's why you told me you live. I only met him yesterday. Where'd you meet this friend of yours? A bar over on 36th Street. When were you supposed to give the car back to him? Well, no time in particular. He said he'd look me up when he needed it. And I guess you boys don't believe me. It does sound kind of crazy, don't it? Sure does. Okay, Clyde, step back. Well, I'm telling the truth. You fellas better do some more checking up. We will. Step back. Number two, Elroy Burke disturbing the peace. Okay, Elroy, step out. Where do you live, Elroy? No place special. When I ask where you live, I want to know where you slept last. Oh. Well, where do you live? A hotel down on South First Street. Nice place. Everything's real handy. How long you been in town, Elroy? Two days. Where you from? Arizona. Little old town name of McNair. Got a job? Nope. I'm kind of taking a vacation. What kind of work do you do? Farm work. Irrigating, stuff like that. How tall are you, Elroy? Six foot four. You married? Sure enough. Where's your family? Down in Arizona, I reckon. That's where they were when I last saw them. How old are you? 33, I think. Don't you know? No. Nope. I've never been much to mess around with details like that. You die when you get old, even if you don't know how old you are. What happened last night? Nothing much. 
I don't know why everybody gets so upset over a little old fight. You sure made a mess out of that bar. I reckon you're right. I had some help, though. How's that? Well, the guys I was fighting broke up some of the stuff. One man couldn't do that much damage. How'd it start? Well, it just took off kind of natural life. I was standing there, and I started to feel pretty good, so I declared myself. Three or four guys took me on. I figured I had them whipped by the time you guys got there. Well, you were taking care of yourself, all right. Shucks. There wasn't nothing personal about it. I was just feeling good. Your feet still hurt? I hope the shot. They're killing me. Okay, all right. Step back. Number three, Edward King. Open shot. Where do you live? I'm pretty Lake sure Hotel, that's him. The hair looks different, from? though. Chicago. He looks like he just got a haircut. That's what it is, I'm sure of. But that's the man, I'm Lieutenant. He's what the one that was around Christmas the day Betty disappeared. Hey, Sergeant Carger. Yes, Lieutenant. Hold number three for interrogation. Did you work around Bellwood yesterday, King? Sure. Hey, what's this all about? Are you in the 500 block of Upton Road? 500 block? Yeah, I sold some cards to a Mrs. Robert. Hey, what's going on here anyway? I haven't done anything. I got a license to sell in this place. Don't you read the papers? Not today, I haven't. Did you just get your hair cut? Yeah, about four this afternoon. Is it against the law to get your hair cut? No. You had quite a bit of money on you when you were picked up, didn't you? A little over $200. Where'd you get it? I just got a commission check this morning. Where'd you cash it? First Security and Trust, 5th and Logan. You can check with them. We will. You think I stole the money? Did you call on a Mrs. Matthews on Upton Road yesterday? Yeah, I don't know. I may have. I only find out the names of the ones that buy from me. She lived in a two-story brick house, 500 block. Has a white picket fence around the front yard. I think so. Oh, is there one of those little statues like they used to tie horses to on the front lawn? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was there. What time were you there? About nine, I guess. Did you talk to Mrs. Matthews? I don't know. I guess so. She said she was a lady of the house. Did she seem upset? Nervous? No. No, she was real nice. Said she was in a hurry. Was going downtown. She wanted me to come back later. She said she hadn't bought her cards yet. What's the matter? Something happened to this Mrs. Matthews? She's been missing since yesterday. Well, so maybe she went for a trip or something. My gosh, you think I got something to do with her being missing? We're just checking. Believe me, Lieutenant, I haven't done anything. You'd better stay around town... Where we can get hold of you. Well, sure I will. I got nothing to run away for. Well, the papers are still giving White a rough time for fading back that 50 yards in the first Bears game. <laughs> Poor guy. He thought sure he could break away. Yeah. Remember when that guy ran the wrong way in the Rose Bowl game? Uh-huh. Yeah, he sure took a ribbing. What was his name? Uh, I used to know. Uh, What was it? I've been trying to think of it all day. Uh, Nice district. Yeah. Oh, Nelson called. Looks like Edward King is in the clear. The company he works for gave him a clean bill. They'd already sent him a commission check for $175. Hmm. I think I'll start in selling Christmas cards. (laughs) Maybe that's a way out for Asher, too. (laughs) Oh, Lieutenant Guthrie. Hello, Miss Murray. Uh, you remember Sergeant Cargan? Yes, yes. Hmm? Is uh, Mr. Matthews home? Oh, he's in the den. He's been in there all morning. Who is it, Mr. Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Cargan. They won't see you. Oh, good. Bring them back. This way. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Miss Matthews. Matthews. I was just getting ready to call you. Any news? Uh, nothing yet, Mr. Matthews. We, um... I wanted to ask you some more questions, if you don't mind. Oh? Sit down, gentlemen. Well, thank you. It won't take long, Mr. Matthews. We'd just like to go over some things with you. All right, Lieutenant. Were you and your wife happily married, Mr. Matthews? What's that? Did you have any serious differences? Well, no, nothing that you could call serious. The only disagreement we ever had was over our son, Charles. Betty would have spoiled him rotten if I hadn't put my foot down. Now, how old is Charles? Well, let's see, he's 33. He lives over on the other side of town. And Betty was always of the mind that we had plenty, so why shouldn't we buy things for Charles now, while we were alive, and could see him enjoy them? She always said he would get everything when we were gone anyway. 
Was your wife ever despondent? Why, no, she had no reason to be. We live comfortably. She keeps busy with her club work, and we usually get along together. She has no enemies that you know of? Oh, no, none. How long has Miss Murray worked for you? Oh, over four years. Well, I guess it's nearly five. She comes and cleans three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. She fixes dinner for us on those nights. And she and Mrs. Matthews get along? As far as I know, they did. You left the house about 7 o'clock Monday morning? That's right. Your wife seemed to be in good spirits? Mm-hmm. She was going downtown. If I'd been going to the office, I'd have taken her as I went in, but I had to go over to Longview. Betty said that she would have the housekeeper, Miss Murray, drive her down. And then she'd come on over to the office and ride home with me that night. And so I waited until nearly oh, 8 o'clock that evening at the office, and, well, you know the rest. Do you know if she had much money with her? As a matter of fact, quite a bit. She was going to buy a dress, and Charles' wedding anniversary is next week, so she was going to get something for them. Mm-hmm. Do you have a gun in the house? Why, yes, I do. It's uh, one Charles brought back from overseas. It's a Luger. Uh, he gave it to me. <laughs> I don't know why I took it. I've always hated guns. I wrapped it in a cloth and put it away in the bottom desk drawer. Did your wife know where it was? Mm-hmm. She kept after me to give it back to Charles. She didn't like a gun in the house either. I see. You still have it? Then? Mm-hmm. I guess so. <laughs> Just a second. I know it's gone. This is where I put it, but it's not here. <laughs> The lineup will not be heard next week, but returns to the air on Friday, December 12th. Consult your papers on Friday, December 12th for the new time of The Lineup. Starting this Friday night, listen for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring John Lund as the insurance sleuth with the action packed expense account, long known to CBS Radio Mystery Fan. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, begins a new series of adventures on most of these same stations this Friday night. You'll enjoy hearing John Lund as the colorful traveling detective who accepts freelance murder and fraud investigations and sums them up on his swindle sheet each week. Remember, yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is back again Friday nights at the Star's Address. Don't miss him. More coffee, then? No, thanks. Quine back? No, I don't think so. You know, Pete, a woman that's afraid of a gun doesn't take one and then go out and get herself lost. Well, Matthews may be lying. I don't think so. The cleaning lady? Mm, I doubt it. Hi, Ben. Pete? Hi. Hi, Quine. You get out to check on Mr. Matthews' son yet? Yeah, I just got back. He's clean. Been in bed for five days with a broken ankle. Broke it playing touch football with the neighborhood kids. You meet his wife? Uh-huh. Both of them real nice people. Sure upset. Wife seems to think an awful lot of Mrs. Matthews. Uh, when did he last see his mother? Well, Sunday afternoon, both Mr. and Mrs. Matthews dropped by to see him. Talked to his mother Monday morning on the phone. She was going downtown. Miss Murray was taking her. Mm. Mrs. Matthews said she had something to talk to him about. Would see him later in the week. He have any idea what it was? No. She said she'd rather not talk about it over the phone, but it could wait. I'll get it, Ben. Remember the guy's name yet, Ben? What guy? The one that ran the wrong way for California, in the Rose Bowl game. Oh, no, no. Sure beats me. I've been trying to think of it since yesterday. Ben. Yeah? I guess that does it. That was Asher. A woman who was just found a canyon about two miles from Matthew's house that answers his wife's description. They're bringing her in now. She's been murdered. <laughs> They just brought her in. Doc wants another look when you're through. Are you coming right in? Yeah. Quine went out to get him. Should be here any minute. I sure don't envy you guys at a time like this. Well, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, I suppose. Funny what you wind up doing. I was going to be a fireman. That them? Yeah. Hello, Mr. Matthews. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant Quine told you? Yes, 
Uh, you okay? Yes, I'm all right. I just, just can't believe it. There must be some mistake. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay, Ed. I've got to call Charles. I'm sorry, Mr. Matthews. Sergeant Quine will go home with you. Thank you. Poor guy. Yeah. Doggone it, I sure wish I'd have been a fireman. Hi, Frank. Hello, Ben. Pete. Hi. Anybody been around? Just the usual. Reporters and so forth. Uh-huh. Was the weapon found with the body? Up there. Looked everywhere around here. Where was the body? Uh, right over there, about three feet this side of that culvert. Looks like she might have been shot up there on the road and fell down here. If somebody stopped their car right up there. They could look both ways because of the turn of the road. Now, who found her? Man up the road about a mile. Mr. Reynolds. Well, I got his address. I thought you might want to talk to him. Uh, 17436 Valley View Drive. Uh -huh. He was out exercising his dogs. Got a couple of Great Danes. Usually doesn't come up this way, but he'd been out of town for a week, and he wanted to give his dogs a good run. Uh, well, where does this road go? That ends up there about a quarter of a mile. Now, this whole area was subdivided about two years ago. Outfit went broke or something. Reynolds Place is the only house in Valley View after you leave Plymouth Boulevard down there. Any tire marks on the road? Oh, lots of them. This is quite a spot for neckers. Uh... Doc said the body had been here about two and a half days. Could have been a lot of cars up here in that time. Uh-huh. Anybody coming out to relieve you? No. Jim told me to stick around until you got here. I don't think you'll find anything to help. I gave the place a good going over. No gun, no nothing. Just the body. Well, you might as well go on in then. Pete and I will take a look around. Okay, Doc. Cigarette, Ben? Oh, thanks. Huh. Fancy. Call tips. Yeah. yeah, I thought I'd try them for a change. <laughs> I lit the wrong end the other day. <laughs> Enough to make you quit smoking. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, is this what you have to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything new? No, nothing. Can't find the gun. Mm, good I recovered the bullet. When you find the gun, it'll be a Luger. I thought it would be. No chance of it being suicide. Mm -mm, none. Uh, what about personal effects? Uh, on the next page. Nothing but what she was wearing. Clothing, wristwatch, wedding ring, no purse. Sorry, I'm not much help, Ben. Uh, we know what happened about noon Monday. Weapon was a Luger. A Luger is missing from the Matthews house. Only three, possibly four people could have known where the gun was. It wasn't stolen by a common house thief. Nothing else was missing. Charles' the son is in the clear. Mr. Matthews is, too. Salesman is clean. May I use your phone, Doc? Sure. Sergeant Quine. Ben, you busy? No. Good. I'll meet you in my office in ten minutes. Pete, go out and pick up Miss Murray. <laughs> Get a stenographer? Yeah, I put him at my desk. Good. He'll be able to hear okay over the intercom. Uh, you stay out there. Pete will stay here in the office. Come in. Miss Murray, Lieutenant. Oh, hello, Miss Murray. Sorry to bother you. Uh, right here's fine. Okay, Quine. I know this will be dull and repetitious for you, Miss Murray, but we'd like to go over everything you've told us. 
Anything you may have left out, no matter how trivial you may think it is, uh, please tell us. Well, I don't know how I can possibly be of any help to you. I've already told you all I know. Uh, do you know Charles, Mr. and Mrs. Matthews' son? I should say I do. He's spoiled rotten. Missus gave him everything under the sun. Did he come over to their house much? Oh, a couple of times a week, I guess. He hadn't been over for nearly a week. Broke his ankle. Uh, did Charles uh, get along with his mother? I suppose so. Certainly should, all she did for him. They never had any words, then? Not that I know of, but anybody that had everything given to him like he has, I wouldn't trust very far. Now, how about uh, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew? Oh, you mean them getting along? That's right. Oh, they seem to get along all right. Of course, when you're working for somebody, you never know. It could have been putting up a front. They have a lot of company. Mrs. did. She's always having her club meet at their house for a canasta party, luncheon, or something. She's always busy with something social. Mm. Uh, what happened Monday morning? My goodness, do we have to go over that again? I've told you several times. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, frankly, Miss Murray, we're stumped. We're trying to uncover any possible lead. Anything at all that happened, no matter what, might in some way help us. Well, all right. I take the bus over there, Hal. I'm there three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm-hmm. I got there Monday morning, about 8.30. Mr. Matthews had left for work by the time I got there. He usually don't leave till about 9. But the missus said he had to go over to Longview to see about a contract he had over there, and he left early. Now, they may have had a fight before I got there, and that's why he left early. I don't know. Uh, did uh, Mrs. Matthews say anything to indicate there'd been any trouble between them that morning? No. Well, she wouldn't have told me. If there had been, she never discussed private matters with me. Now, about quarter to nine, there was a phone call from Charles. They talked about ten minutes, and the missus was on her way upstairs when the front doorbell rang. Mm -hmm. She hollered to me in the kitchen and told me she'd answer it. I didn't know who it was at the door. Probably a salesman. And she didn't talk long at the door, because shortly after, I heard her go on upstairs. When did she tell you she wanted to go downtown? Oh, I forgot. Just as soon as I got there. She wanted to go and buy Charles and his wife an anniversary present. She was planning on coming home with Mr. Matthews, and I was to have dinner ready about 6.30. Uh, what time did you leave the house? Well, it must have been around 9.30. Uh, what, what route did you take downtown? Well, we went straight down Pacific Boulevard. Uh-huh. You didn't take a shortcut over Valley View Drive? No, no, that's a dead end. How do you know? Well, I tried it once. When? What difference does it make? I just wondered. I know when it was. When I first went to work for them, I had my own car then, and I tried to go home one night that way. Now, how long have you worked for them out here? Four years. Nearly five. Do you know if they kept a gun in the house? No, I don't know. I suppose they did. Most every man has a gun of some kind around. Anything happen on the way downtown? Mm, nothing. What did you do after you left Mrs. Matthews? I went on back to their house. I had a lot of work to do. What kind of a car did you own, Miss Murray? Oh, it was an old thing. 1937 Ford. What on earth is that to do with what happened? Do you have a driver's license? Well, of course I do. Could I see it, please? I suppose so. What are you trying to do? You think I did something to Mrs. Matthews? Here. Thank you. Did you have a license to drive your car? Of course. That's a renewal license you have there. I know. Uh, this shows your original license was issued in 1949. That's only three years ago. What year did you say you sold your car? Now, I didn't say... What possible good can all this do? This whole thing has upset me so... If you think for one minute that I had anything to... Well, I'm not accusing you of anything. We, we only want your help. Well, I don't know what more help I can be. I've gone over this so much. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You say you tried to take a shortcut over Valley View Drive when you first went to work for the Matthews? Yes, I just told you that. That was nearly five years ago. Of course. Five years ago, there wasn't any subdivision in that area. There wasn't any such place as Valley View Drive. <laughs> she was always giving thanks to Charles. 
Well, I, I took a bracelet that was hers. Oh, she never come right out and told me she knew. She just hint at it, make remarks. I heard her talking to Charles about something she wanted to tell him. And I knew what it was. So I found the gun in the desk drawer that morning while she was upstairs. When we were down on Plymouth, I made her turn up that road. I tried to scare her. She just laughed at me. I didn't mean to kill her. Two guns in my apartment. <laughs> okay, Quinn. <laughs> you got it? Okay. Book her. <laughs> Roy Riggles. What? Yeah, they ran the wrong way in the Rose Bowl. Roy Riggles, that's his name. Oh, yeah. Lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again on Friday, December 12th, when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire, every one of you through, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Police Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off the number, their name, and charge. Have any questions or identification? Please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line. Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by David M. Light, with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Virginia Gregg, Sam Edwards, Clayton Post, Harry Lang, Jerry Hausner, and Howard McNear. The lineup is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The lineup will not be heard next week, but returns to the air on a new day and at a new time. Beginning December 12th, the lineup will be heard on Fridays at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time over most of these same CBS radio stations. Remember, the lineup and yours truly, Johnny Dollar, will be heard on Fridays. Dan Coverly speaking. And remember, you meet comedy when you meet Millie, starring Audrey Totter, Thursday nights on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>